Hey team, and welcome back to our channel. Uh, so this would normally be the time where I would be talking about our magical elections for the Scorpio lunar eclipse coming up. But um, unfortunately, we don't have any. There's not really any good times uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks to really take advantage of. Um, it happens. It sucks when it happens. But, you know, we just we just relax. Um, and instead of relaxing and instead of doing nothing, I thought I would do something that I haven't done in a long time. And that is sit down and have a chat with another astrologer. And so today we are sitting down with our new best friend, Australian naturopath <laughs> and medical astrologer, Kira Sutherland. So thank you so much for being here today, Kira, while Aww. Lee attacks my hands because he just wants them. Oh, I'm sorry. My co-host Lee is also here yes. to help me. That's that's probably, he was like, no, introduce me too. The, the real star of the show. Exactly. And I'm sorry I'm to like, invite you on here to play second fiddle to a ginger cat, a, but you know, it's all right. I went and tried to find my cat, but she wouldn't, she wouldn't show up. So um, I love I'm your new best friend. Yeah. And I say she's my new best friend because we've only actually recently met um, just at ESAR. This past summer was our first time meeting. Um, and yeah. I feel like I've been robbed of, so, you know, I've been in astrology, mm -hmm. like for, you know, uh, 2012 was my first conference. You're at 2012. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like I've been in astrology for a long time, but that I've been robbed of your friendship um, for this entire time, Kira, because we I both know. know Kelly and Kelly never got us together. So we can blame her. What is that? I know. That, Kelly? So, <laughs> and I probably started doing conferences in Australia yeah, before 2012, but mm. yeah, my first international conference would have been 2014 face to face. So I don't know. Oh. I know I went and I heard you lecture. I know I was at oh, your really? UAC lecture. Oh, that's embarrassing. You did <laughs> you did a UAC lecture. Well, I didn't come and introduce myself. I was just scoping out who else yeah, was the lecturing. Yeah, the competition, right, right, right. Who else was lecturing on medical and what yeah. do they know? And um, you gave a kick-ass lecture oh, at you. UAC on <laughs> herbs and medical astrology. Yeah. And then and then somehow I, you were, you know, everybody was probably fangirling you. So I, I left and oh. I didn't introduce myself. And then later, Kelly gave me your beautiful PDF um on cold pepper oh and, yeah and the herbs and I somehow didn't relate that to being <laughs> the same person that I heard lecture wow. and then it took me ages after we met at ESA when we met at ESA it took me a couple hours to connect oh this is all the same person oh this is the same Ryan Butler <laughs> who spells his name with an H I know there are many of them floating out there I, but I didn't I must just not have registered names right mm. I just I have a bit of a name like I can remember everything about people. I can, obviously we all remember everyone's astrology, but I'm mm. really slow with names. So there you go. There we go. But we are now our new, yeah, um, new our, best our friends. new in our crew, new buddy friendship. So here we are. <laughs> all right. So Kira, uh, tell me a little. Tell us a little bit about um, your 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 practice. Oh, okay. So I am. Um, I studied. So I'm an Australian naturopath just to qualify from a North American one because it's a different it's actually a different qualification of studying the same things. But um, so but I'm American born, so that makes it more confusing. So I'm American born, but university is in Australia. So I'm an Australian naturopath, nutritionist, herbalist, homeopath and astrologer. And so I kind of combine all of that together. I really should be saying I practice naturopathic astrology, I think is how I would put it. But um, yeah, so I interweave all of those together for quite a, hmm, when I'm in clinical practice, it's very much looking at natal chart predispositions of health and illness and what to, and looking at transits progressions whatever whatever they're appearing with and um, what to go do with it so I'm a I'm much more a I'm quite prescriptive in let's change your diet let's look at these nutrients maybe you need these herbs you need these activities so I'm yeah I'm quite prescriptive the naturopath comes in and tells people what to do with their astrology more so than some of the old traditional techniques. I, I love the old traditional techniques, mm -hmm. but, and I will use them. I'll pull up a decumbiture if I need. Um, but yeah, I do decumbiture as much more of illnesses in the past or accidents rather than a decumbiture of the moment. I wish I did that more, but I just run out of time. I see. And so what was the order that all this happened in? Like, did your interest in like 
your did your study of like naturopathy come first and then astrology like kind of became a branch of that or was it sort of inverted where you were like into Uh, it or were they unconnected at first and then you're like you know what just put it together yeah that's a great question (laughs) uh one of my mom's best friends was quite alternative and an astrologer and if you don't know, I'm an Aries. I know you know, but if people don't know, I'm an Aries son. And so this Aries astrologer, when I was a little girl, was feeding me all this astrology Aries stuff, which we love, of course, because it's about us. <laughs> and um, so exposed to astrology from a really young age, but then got in my late teen years, got very into kind of all spiritual things, but also nutrition, but completely separately. Mm-hmm. And then when I started studying naturopathy, um, I, yeah, I started studying astrology simultaneously, but not connected. Mm -hmm. And then my astrology teacher gave, you know, the one lesson in level two on medical astrology. And I was like, what the, oh my God, this is, this is what I've been looking for. I mean, I kind of knew it existed from Culpepper books Mm -hmm. and, and knowing herbs, had, you know, elemental, you know, fire, water, heat, but I didn't realize there was this whole system. And so the minute I found that I was gone. So I I guess they really happened coincidentally at the same time. And it was just, I was so, so excited. Okay. Okay. Cause I was going to ask the follow-up question was that what was your entry to like medical astrology specifically? Um, Because that's not, you know, while many of us are introduced to like the concept of astrology at a, at a, at a younger age, like medical astrology, like, or any sort of like specific application comes much later. Right. Yeah. So I would have, uh, my astrology teacher, it was probably level two that, that got it, you know, the special topics come in like lunar phases and stuff like that. Um, and at the time, so this is going back showing my age, but, um, this is the early nineties. Were you born yet? Yeah. <laughs> okay, just checking. I was all into like Power Rangers and dinosaurs. I was. Oh, yeah. So um, early 90s, there was no online learning. You know, now it's like, oh, my God, you can access right. any lecture any around the world. So my beginning of medical astrology was literally, I found out it existed. Nobody was teaching it around me. So I located every book. I, I just scoured the book. Back then, you had to walk into physical bookstores, no Amazon, (laughs) no Amazon, no nothing. What a nightmare. No. (laughs) Um, Although I'd be a lot wealthier if Amazon didn't exist for Um, ordering books and Booktopia and all the spices. Um, Yeah, so through books and whatever book I could find first probably influenced me. And and Mm, you didn't find them very quick. You know, used bookstores was probably where I found 50% of them. And then, yeah. I got a hold of this old medical astrologer from in Australia who had passed on. Oh. Someone gave me his set of notes to kind of look at, you know, it was like a very short class. So I, yeah, I, I slowly got drip fed. So I think the way I practice medical astrology, because I never had a teacher go do this, then do this. And like, it took me a while to even learn what a decumbature chart was because mm. that wasn't part of the original reading I was doing. So my medical astrology evolved in a very odd way, but in a good way. I mean, it evolved as an, you know, as a naturopath because I'm in the way it meant to for you. I'm taking (laughs) cases and, and I know how to, you know, I've got all that medical knowledge. So it's, yeah, I do it a little bit, not differently, like better. I just do it a little bit differently. (laughs) But okay. So (laughs) talk about herbs. Um, how do you view <laughs> herbs? How do you, how do you like look at herbs? Do you look at them more as like energetics or do you look at them more as just like the physical uh, actions? Yeah. I'll be honest. I probably got a better handle on herbs and their actions first. Okay. That makes sense. So I will always go to their physiological actions first and then like I'll just like when you're treating somebody and there's something going on in their liver and I know I need liver support, I will think about my three liver herbs that I want to use. And then I back up and I look at it astrologically for which one's most suited. So I kind of use it as a second filter rather than the first filter. 
pretty much. Although there's certain herbs with certain planets or signs that I'm like, no, I will always use that. Like there's certain signatures. I will, sure. I will, I will think the energetics first. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Interesting. Uh, I do pretty much the same thing. I do like, um, cause I always try to be more practical about things, you know, like, I think that's the most important part. Like we can get all like philosophical and, uh, about like astrology and herbalism and things like that. And that's fine. But at the end of the day, there's like another person that needs something, you know, that yeah. they, they need something. Yeah. So, so it's like, what's, what kind of the same thing? What are they, what are they, what are we up against? What are we up against doc? And then, you know, what's, what are my, what are my kind of top five contenders that I think would be good here? And then I kind of yeah. go through planetary signature of like the decumbature or something. Uh, yeah. And then I'll go from act, then I'll go to action from there. Like, do I need something hot or cold yes. kind of a thing? Yeah. I just think yes. that makes the most sense. Yeah, I do. I definitely do it the same. It's, and it's interesting because I teach naturopathy at a big university and they don't learn. Sadly, naturopathy has kind of eradicated anything energetic and they don't really oh, know about the energetics of herbs anymore or and so it's interesting to try to teach they learn a little bit of hot and cold right um but they don't learn enough on there's one history lesson in the very beginning like oh, i right. can't even remember it and um so yeah teaching even just hot to cold bitters and uh, you know warming and potentiating herbs and and then i'm in there going so and that is you know i sneak in some of the astrological <laughs> rulership and 75 percent of them love it and the other 25 are like that's a no i'm evidence-based and i'm like okay that's fine. well there's evidence to suggest that this herb is ruled by the sun okay <laughs> <laughs> And we're done. <laughs> yeah. And it's also interesting with herbs, you know, because when you look at treating somebody, are you treating by antipathy? Or are you treating by sympathy? And sometimes I'll make a mix of herbs for somebody and I won't even think about the astrology of it. I've made my mix. And then I look at the herbs astrologically and I'm like, isn't that interesting? I have three sympathies and two antipathies. You know, there's always a mix anyway. It's not like you're only treating in one direction. You're always, to me, I'm always using both, right? Uh, so are, so you mostly work with like compounds then? Yes. You so don't do simples very much? I do do simples if somebody really needs it. But no, in Australia, like the US is really into herbal teas right. more than anything. And yeah. so people will mix teas. Um, and, you know, one of the five or four herbs in a tea is usually they're more for flavor than right. action. Mint. I have to admit no. that. <laughs> yeah. Licorice. Or, licorice yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then... Um, so in Australia, we use liquid extracts. I can actually get, let me get you one. Hold on. So we have, there's Schisandra or Schisandra, depending on how you want to say it. Um, and so that's 500 milliliters. That's eight. Uh, how many ounces? 30 mils in an ounce. Oh, so know. whatever. I just use milliliters. Massive. Okay. Well, that's, <laughs> that's half a liter. And what we typically do, so we have these great companies where you can buy them already made and you, I take a 200 mil bottle or a hundred mil bottle, you know, three ounces or six, seven ounce bottle. And we traditionally mix five herbs into okay. a mix. Sometimes you only do three, sometimes you do six, but five is the real traditional number. And um, so you combine them all together that way. They all taste like shit anyway, so it's kind of irrelevant. <laughs> and, and then you take just a teaspoon, you know, two or three times a day. So we typically use herbs. We do do... Um, we do do teas, we do do tablets, but yeah, I love liquid herbs. I think so are these, really... um, are these like tinctures or? They're tinctures. Okay. Yeah. They're tinctures or liquid extracts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're, and um, they're in, they're in alcohol. That was going to be can question. Also, yeah. You <laughs> can also buy them done in glycerin. Mm -hmm. So there is one company that does what we call, we call them glissy tracks. Oh, so cute. you can buy a huge range of them in glycerin. And there was a company for a while making them in a fruit juice. Oh, I would love that. I would be. Yeah. Yeah. I would be there. That was, they're not, customer. they weren't as potent. And a lot of, you know, the reason things are put in alcohol is alcohol to extract certain chemical constituents better than just water. So, and some of these companies even look at different heats to extract that for right. extracting certain things. But yeah. So this is one of my favorite That's companies. Super cool. 
does a little photo yeah. of the actual, that's P and E, the yeah. flat. So you actually see what you're using because otherwise we're a little bit removed. In Australia, oh, we're a little bit removed from the physical plant. If you're using teas and growing things yourself, sure. then you, you get so much more of that doctrine of signature and the feel of what you use it for. And I do have drawers of, of dried herbs, but I will typically do tinctures first. Interesting. Be better known as jungle juice by most of my clients they'll call up and they're like i need another bottle of jungle juice why yeah, do they call it because it, like, mm, it tastes terrible oh gotcha <laughs> okay <laughs> it yeah tastes terrible yeah well, yeah, yeah. I mean... so so yeah so i'll look at how those are set up and often i'm like you know it's the idea and culpepper did this right if you know you, the planet causing the problem you're going to use you know antipathy mm -hmm. but then if you've got a depleted organ or a depleted planet, you're going to, the beautiful thing about herbs, and you know this, but a lot of people don't, is there's herbs, you know, we think of herbs that will kill a virus or kill a bacteria, but there's other herbs that literally help an organ function better. Mm -hmm. And that is magic. that is what herbal medicine has <laughs> over modern medicine. Modern medicine doesn't do that, right? Yeah. Literally, there's herbs that help heal the actual tissue and make it function better. And it that's, that's magic. So why yeah. five herbs? Why is that the traditional number? Is it like a TCM influence? Maybe, but I wasn't taught it that way. It, I don't know. I could go as practical as a really common do a, a common amount of a herb to put in a bottle is, yeah, that's more bottle size. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I can't even find you that for, I've never was taught why I probably does come from TCM, but yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. I, I, was, really, that's I was curious about, I was, I was curious that it was like a specific number. Um, yeah. We could make up an astrological reason. Yeah. Because there are five inner, there are five visible planets, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Although sometimes we add in, you'll pick your five main herbs and then you'll put in five mils of ginger or chili because that potentizes yeah. it, it like makes it work synergistically better. And so you do sneak in that sixth Interesting. one, but yeah, the hidden too sixth. many herbs <laughs> you're trying to do too much, right? Yeah, so, that's fair. That's fair. But a lot of mixed teas are five herbs as well. Oh, okay. hmm. Maybe that's a five, you know, we're not doing it with elements, but there are, you sure. know, even though we only use four elements, there is ether, <laughs> right? So I don't know, five is, yeah, four or five. Hmm. Hmm. Curious. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. So hmm. what are your big this is so this is a conversation that we've kind of started to get into in a in a previous talk just between the two of us. Um, but what are your main sort of like um sources of like exploring kind of like planetary rulerships of herbs? How often and how often do you kind of use that information? Because this is like its whole own can of worms that I'm opening deliberately. We, yeah, we talked <laughs> about this the other day, like who, what planet rules what herb. Right, right. Cold pepper mm -hmm. will always be, that's one. my first source. Um, I use two books of rulership, the um, Lay Layman's book of rulerships, I will look at, yeah. because she will list a herb and then list the suggested rulerships and she'll actually list where she found those like she'll list mm. her original source because she writes things like that it's amazing somebody named rex also has a rulership book um, Bills, i think is the last name yeah oh yeah it's, i was thinking rex was his yeah that rulership book rex was, mm -hmm. i will look at that um i tend to use a lot of the magical books so cunningham's everyone seems to say to me is a really good source. Yeah, but is that just because it's the only one? <laughs> no, See? well, I started, I started <laughs> buying a lot of rulership books, magical rulership books, because I want to see what everybody has to say about it. Mm -hmm. But I love how Cunningham's, it's not even so much the rulership, but he, I've got one on foods that he did as well. Oh, cool. And he goes into the history of the plant a little bit. And I love that you get this full, it's rather than just telling me about the plant, whether it be a right. food or a herb, he gives me a little bit about where it's from and how it's grown or how was it traditionally processed. And so I feel like he has this good 
handle on it. Uh, who else do you use? Uh, yeah, that's always a hard one, isn't it? Um, because the beauty with Some Culpepper is that, you know, he gives you a book of like 330 herbs and a lot of them are still, you know, properly used today. Yeah. Many of them aren't. Um, and that's, that, that's all you gives that always gives you a really strong foothold. Um, but the unfortunate side is that Culpepper was writing for a very specific audience, right? He oh. was writing for like the poor English folk and was yeah. working with plants that they would come in contact with in, in England. Well, the world is much bigger than that. And oh, so, so, you know, globalization, uh, has opened us up to all these different plants that Culpepper never got to see, you know what I mean? Like he never got to experience these before. And so it's like, well, what do you do? Like, cause people use these, you know, they're incorporated in more modern herbalism. Like, you know, they're, they're options, but do we just yeah. act like they don't exist? Like what, 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 like, how do we move forward with this? Well, we have so many uh, Chinese <laughs> herbs that we use. Right. So I will, I will look in China. Oh, so I do have some TCM herbal books that I will look at for what their rulerships are. They don't do so much planets as they do hot calls mm -hmm. and the elements and Ayurveda. I have some Ayurvedic books that do that as well, because a lot of herbs I use are more TCM Ayurveda. Now. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Mm. But like what, are, what other sources do you? Yeah. Use? So mostly curious. when I come up with a plant that like Culpepper doesn't mention, I try to just figure it out myself. Like I try to just make a good guess for it because that's, Honestly, that's as good as anybody that's else as good did. as anybody else's guess unless there's like um you know part of that is also like research into the plant itself um because i'm usually very curious about like how that plant has been utilized in its own culture that's usually like one of the big things that i focus on more than anything else mm -hmm. um and then just try to work my way out from there but yeah a lot of times it's a guessing game and i'm really not afraid to be like i don't know i don't know what this is oh yeah and no, just I'm leave it at that um i tend to be a lot more skeptical of um like new age philosophy assignments to plants um not like to what? say Give anything me an example just like uh i'm i wish i had um i mean i wish i had the, the scott cunningham book because i know that mine had several like question marks in it oh um, yeah but um uh, so i tend to be a bit more skeptical there not to say anything bad necessarily about like the new age philosophy but just that I feel like that is almost an entirely kind of like separate um, philosophical framework. And they're just okay. coming at it from like such a completely different place, like a completely different understanding of like planets to some extent than I'm used to. And I just, I just not sure the two systems really work well, um, yeah. at least in the way that I'm trying to, to use something. Well, and the magical properties for a herb are very different from, can be very different from the physiological properties. And, and see, that's I what think... some of these books are, look. That some of these books, it's more about, here's the magical properties of that herb. That's not necessarily what it's going to do to you physiologically. And I think we had this conversation. I almost want to get together <laughs> with a ton of books and two or three other herbal medical astrologers and go through the herbs mm -hmm. and do not to reclassify them, but to go, yeah. what are these rulerships? What is I, cause I put together a massive list the other day. Um, but I put every herb, you know, I used all these books that we were talking about. And I, if it, you know, if Cunningham had this book under Jupiter, this herb mm -hmm. under Jupiter, I put it there, but yeah. if Culpepper had it under somebody else, I put it there as well. So you can find mm -hmm. the same herb under lots of different planets. And again, we're not black and white. Right. Herbs have different important. actions. Yeah. And so I can see where someone has given a herb to Jupiter and to Mars, even though you think those are so totally opposite. It's like it's like organ rulerships in medical astrology. I'm going to get know. myself in trouble here. <laughs> give me your give me. Oh, there's your cat. Oh, no. Sugar, come back. Oh, here she is. No, she's coming. <laughs> Sorry. We were trying to find my I saw cat that. Earlier. I saw that tail flick in the doorway. I said, oh, <laughs> Ryan discovers a cat. News at 11. Hi. Look who's there. Hi. She's she a licker. There. Yeah, there's the licks that you were telling me about. Very Yeah, cute. she's only little, but she's tiny, tiny. Oh, very cute. Hi, sugar. Oh. Hey. Oh. Where have you been? Oh, yeah. she'll look you, lick you until you put her down. She'll go and jump <laughs> that, on. That's her sign. That's she funny. typically sits on top of my computer. Um... <laughs> 
you know, the traditional, I'm not going against any traditional or medieval rulership. Oh, we're going to fight. I, I, no, no, I'm not going against. <laughs> I'm not going against them. I totally understand where they're coming from, and I love that. But we also understand the human body a lot better, and the physiology of the human body, and what we thought the liver did. Not specifically meaning the liver, but mm -hmm. the liver does fifty different things in the body that we didn't know about until a hundred years ago, or like the pancreas, and and so. I don't disagree with any traditional rulership. Yeah. I don't disagree at all, but I can also see where other rulerships could potentially come in. Mm -hmm. Hit me. Um, go. <laughs> I, uh, so I actually had, I, I had two separate thoughts. I'm probably going to forget them all. Um, three separate thoughts. I'm probably going to forget them all, but um, you talking about like plants having you know like uh magical utilizations that seem kind of at odds with like their herbal utilizations or like their medical utilizations don't you think that's a problem though hmm. i'm curious about your thoughts on this i've never this considered is, that this is something yeah. that i that i think about a lot uh like in a completely different way um because uh one of my big uh astrological util or applications is through like ritual magic with fixed stars is a big area yeah. um and I'm always really <sighs> perplexed, I guess, by people's willingness to just be like, uh, to I don't I don't really know like a good a good word for it, but just a willingness to be like that's just not how it works in in natal astrology. Like if their if their like natal interpretation of a star is very different from like a magical application of a star. So I'll give you a great example. Um, yeah. But our goal, the star our goal is a yeah. star that in you know traditional astrology is is like very unfortunate it's it's a very malevolent star it's not it's she's not a fun she's not a fun character to be around um but in the like magical application of the star out goal it's uh it's very protective and mm. so people are just like it it's fine there are two different branches of astrology two different applications that just see it differently and i'm just like that hurts my soul in a way yeah. to where I'm like, uh, and it's like, it's fine. It's not that I think that they should manifest exactly the same, but if you're looking at these two things as like completely separate expressions, or like different expressions, I'm like, there's gotta be, there's gotta be something unifying about this or else yeah, it feels very disconnected to me. It does feel disconnected. And look, most of the time, the action of the herb and the magical application, you can find the links. Mm -hmm. Um, you're probably going to get her bum in your face in a yes. minute. But, and she's, she's going for my fan, not my microphone. Oh, um, yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. It is interesting. Um, hmm, what am I supposed to say there? I, no, I, no, I, I mean, no, it's just I agree it's just with you. Yeah, it's and it's interesting it's... to look at that and kind of go, oh, but I, yeah. Hmm. Because because kind of like you were saying, you can usually figure out the theme about like what it is that unifies it. And for like our goal, it's she's not like her her magic isn't protective in the way that you would normally think about it. She's very aggressive in her protection. Like she seeks out threats and neutralizes them. And that's a very different kind of energy than when we usually think about protection, but fits the theme there. Um, yeah. And I feel like you can get similar things with um like with uh, herbs and like their magical or medical correspondences that might not seem like they really fit well. And then you just kind of cat bump on the, yeah, that happens She's to me all the time. My, whole <laughs> my, oh, yep. my camera is on my screen. I have a big screen and now she's like deciding to chew on my screen. Yeah. The least special. Um, but yeah, I also feel like those themes are there. It's just whether or not the person kind of presenting that information um, yeah. Wants to go and explore that more, which isn't yeah. often something that they maybe have the time to do in whatever format they're presenting it in. But yeah. I'm always just like, guys, I think this is something we need to talk about. Like, <laughs> we need but to, it is. We need to I, tighten this up. <laughs> and I would love to tighten it up. Well, this is what the herbal thing came right. up because you and I talked last week, and I was like, I would love to sit down and go through the philosophy of why these rulerships are especially where there's contention or should they both fit not that we could create a definitive guide because we're no, not we <laughs> you know i'm not a god or goddess i'm not all knowing not yet but but <laughs> <laughs> but um it's yeah because sometimes i find it frust i find that frustrating mm -hmm. as well or i i, I took a 
you know, and then you have people giving modern rulerships to herbs, you know, like oh. Neptune. Oh, and, don't hurt me yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> all the drugs, you just, know, all, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, all yeah. the hallucinogenics get handed over, which I, I understand, but they have their traditional rules. Yeah, and it's, it's so interesting to see so many of the mind altering drugs are actually ruled, herbs, sorry, mm -hmm. are ruled by Saturn. And the moon. Yeah. They usually have a double dip there. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I was reading somebody else's work the other day who's very modern spiritual doing mm. herbs and they had given a lot of modern herbs that I'd never seen rulerships to. They had given some to and I was and I didn't disagree mm -hmm. with what they were, but I was like, where's that source? Was yeah. is there a <laughs> Why source is this? to this? Yeah. Or did you just do this? And we can as a herbalist. Yeah. yeah. You so either tell me your source aside. or tell me your tell me your logic. Tell me, like, tell me you were <laughs> walk that, me through yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, because there were one or two where I would have maybe gone somewhere else. But you know, we all we have different. You know, this goes back to Native, you know, you know, um, indigenous um, medicines. Mm. They had huge conversations with herbs, and they only had you know until a hundred years ago, people were only using herbs that grew near them. Right. Exactly. And we now have, you know, my favorite herbs are from like China and Japan and India. And, and but we we also go back to as a herbalist, I very much go back to more indigenous style of you also have herbs that work better for you than other herbs as a practitioner. Mm. And I remember okay, reading, I, see. I, I remember reading a book. There are books on this called like plant spirit medicine and 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 the other books that I read that were like, you actually need to go out as a medicine person and commune with the soul of these plants before they allow you to properly use them. Ooh. And, and if the plant soul doesn't speak to your soul, that's not your medicine. And it was this philosophy that then when people come to you, they will need some of whatever medicine you are allowed to use or the way otherwise they would never have come to you mm. and so it was these medicine men going yeah i only have 10 herbs all i use <laughs> is 10 herbs but if you come to me you must need one of those yeah 10. you must need one of those 10 <laughs> and um and it's a simplified you know way to think about it but i do definitely think there's an energetic principle to how my energy works with a herb that I then give to a client. And I know mm. I'm going a bit esoteric. Here, no, no, no. I mean, but, we're going to, we're going to go deeper here. I'm interested in this. Like um, if you ever try to grow herbs, mm -hmm. things won't grow for you that should. Like okay, I remember okay. like as a baby herbalist, you know, everyone then goes and plants all their, I didn't grow up with um, parents that I didn't grow up with a mom that was into um gardening. Gardening, yeah. I grew up, Me I grew up in a I grew up in a townhouse. Uh -oh. I thought uh, you were gonna say a tent and I was like, Kira, oh my God. <laughs> no, 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 townhouse. Um so you know my mom had a bunch of cactus. That was it. Um okay, okay. so you know I'm a baby herbalist and you know you want to grow everything. Right. And rosemary, which is supposed to be the easiest thing to grow in the world dies on me oh my no gosh. matter what I do it okay. dies on me okay and so and I'm, I'm not down. using it what to like haunt <laughs> me with it <laughs> <laughs> to haunt you with rosemary yes what a haunting plant no 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 I just think this is fun and like you go to people's houses and I'm like oh my god that's like a massive tree bush of rosemary these people are going whereas mine just drop all their like it's like the energetics of rosemary and I don't which is a Mars herb right and I have all this Mars and you know Aries energy to me Yet I can't grow rosemary to save myself. I've tried like 10 different times. I love using it in cooking. Mm -hmm. Whereas like. So sage, what's your, what I was going to ask, like, what's your, like, what was your first, I guess, like plant spirit ally or whatever so, the correct terminology for that is. Yeah. Yeah. So sage, mm -hmm. which is meant to be incredibly difficult to grow, but no one told me that. <laughs> I can grow like, I can throw sage seedlings onto cement <laughs> and I'll have like a sage bush like it's amazing how well it grows for me and people are like what do you mean sage grows for you sage grows for nobody and I was like I know that. <laughs> but I am having trouble with rosemary you know and we're talking about Mediterranean herbs here but sure yeah so there's just it's interesting and then I you know yeah it's interesting 
Okay. So I think we just have affinities for certain herbs or, you know, I teach herbal medicine at university and I watch students as they put together herbal mixes and, and um, it's just really interesting to look at who vibrates to different, you know, there's certain herbs I would never live without that other people couldn't care about. Right. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So we're pro sage and anti rosemary. I got it. I'm not anti rosemary. <laughs> rosemary is amazing, but it's like I've never owned a bottle of liquid rosemary to put in anybody's mix. A because okay. I think it tastes really, it tastes too strong. Sure. But um, yeah, rosemary comes to mind too because I work with another herbalist <laughs> who's lecturing at the moment at the same university, and she's obsessed with rosemary. And so all her students get to my class and they're like, "Let's put rosemary in. Let's put rosemary." I'm like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> sage only <laughs> no and they're not even they can't, they can't be yeah, no, no, they're, they're not the same. different yeah, actions no. yeah but um you know we think of uh, you know rosemary is this like stimulant tonic and mm -hmm. you know great in the brain but we now know rosemary has a secondary um action on the liver and so i have all these students coming through going oh rosemary for the liver and i'm like what the what yeah that would like be a my first. secondary action and i'm like what, what about all the other liver herbs? I want the <laughs> liver herbs first rather than rosemary. And they're not wrong, but sure. it's not. I'm like, what about St. John's Ward? What about <laughs> Shisandra? What about, you know, like, what about Globe Artichoke? You know, there's all these other amazing liver herbs. But anyway, it's like rosemary is haunting me or something. I don't know. Do you have any herbs that like you can't use or you have bad experiences with? So as you were telling, as you were like initially introducing the concept to me, I was running through my my head list. I was running through the list in my head and I was like, oh, I thought about it this way. Um, because I would say that uh, unfortunately for you, that my biggest plant ally probably is also rosemary. Oh wow! I have a giant bush in my backyard that I planted a couple of years ago, which is awesome. And um, I have... I love it so much. I use it. I use it ritually probably every day. I can't take it, which is funny. Like physically, oh, I can't take it. Yeah. Um, or it's contraindicated it... for me. But uh, Do you know, it's funny because I will use it in magical ritual. Oh yeah, you have to. No problem. But I can't. <laughs> like yeah, and yeah, I have to. things from you. I have some. Yeah. You know. Um solar and the things? my the, yeah solar Are yeah solar have rosemary yeah uh -huh. um and my 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 probably first like plant I probably need to work on work with is probably lavender yeah lavender so I tried to hard. plant lavender and I I couldn't get it and I've That's tried a couple a of times herb. but I like it you know yeah one of my favorite teas is like a lavender earl gray mix I love it I drink mm. it so much. Um, but yeah, I, I, when I, yeah, that's the one plant that I, maybe not the one plant, but the one that most immediately comes to mind when it's like one that I've tried a couple of different times to grow in different ways, like different ways, different places. Yeah. And it just yeah. hasn't, hasn't gone. Yeah. It's Interesting. Funny, it? I think it's really powerful to look at that. Right. Interesting. Yeah. I'm going to have to explore mm, what I'm it is. I'm trying to think of other, I had a cat who used to attack comfrey every time I tried to Well, that makes it. sense. <laughs> why oh just because of like comfrey like uh um ha oh crap it can like lead to like liver damage with long-term usage yeah because of its we uh what is it pas pure lizardine alkaloids yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so but they're trying to save you <laughs> from ingesting we're, like a truck we're of comfrey. Legally not allowed we're not allowed to ingest comfrey in australia right it's banned we oh. can use it topically yeah um such beautiful flowers i love growing it mm. and um so that's real by saturn isn't it Come yeah on. absolutely yeah yeah <laughs> um, but um it's uh my cat would attack it as if it was catnip like like destroy it like that's pull funny. it into shreds and i was like what is going on there <laughs> different different cat to my cat <laughs> what is going on there I know. Mm, interesting. I'm trying to think of what else. So mm. what is, which of the four qualities are your favorite and why? Oh. <laughs> completely, wow. completely different, but unrelated topic. <laughs> Things I think about a lot. I don't think I have a favorite. Oh no. What do you like? I like moisture the most. And is that because you need more moisture? Like I, I <laughs> I like I guess I mostly just like the actions of moisture um and sort of like how herb. uh kind of more just like as a quality like its ability to kind of connect things and like smooth, smooth. things out and yeah mm. soothe things and 
uh, kind of has, you know, like a, a secondary sort of like relaxing quality to it. Mm. I just feel like everybody needs a little bit more, a little bit less friction, a little bit more lubrication in their yeah. lives. Uh, and I just really like moisture. Uh, that and I think it's one of the ones that's a little bit, um, uh, a little bit more like esoteric. So I think it makes it sound fancy because uh, like oh. heat and cold, I think are pretty I think everybody has a pretty good understanding of like heat and cold, even like, yeah. even if they know nothing, you can pretty much like, they're really easy to demonstrate. Even if somebody like knows nothing, people pick up on it pretty well, but moisture and dryness, I think are a little bit more difficult yeah. to really like access. And so I just like how, how, yeah, uh, unintended, I, can't say I, I guess, a... how flexible like moisture is and what it can do. And I can't say I have a favorite, Dang. but <laughs> I think it also depends on your constitution and like oh, yeah. and where you live. Like I live in Sydney, Australia, which is in, has so much moisture yeah. that I'm not in love with more. I mean, <laughs> moisture as an emollient and yeah, soothing yeah. and giving marshmallow or, you know, like, you know, moisture for healing is phenomenal. But I live in an area where mold is a huge problem oh, yeah, yeah. and dampness. And so... I don't love it more than the other. I love, it I love all my children equally. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, but that said, I'm like obsessed with being in the snow. Yeah. Oh. So, rather than, yeah. Hmm. That's really <laughs> I love your question. They're random, good. Random thoughts. Um, hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. So we're gonna we're gonna not choose a side on the four qualities. That's fine, I guess. Mm. Um, okay, You're so like, I guess I guess <laughs> You're like disappointed. <laughs> um, yeah, that's fine. You don't have to come up with an answer now. I just well, I was just curious. Yeah, I don't have one for um, that, but I hmm. like that that was a question. <laughs> um, so and and again, this will be controversial for you okay. a little bit medieval. I love bit. Saturn and I love Saturn and Mars. I think yeah, they, they're cool. They, I think they get such a bad rap, <laughs> and we forget how amazing they are. And I, that's one of my big things astrologically is, you know, the benefics are amazing, but they can health wise, they can cause so many problems that you know Mars and Saturn can come to the rescue with, especially in the modern world. Okay, this is something else I was gonna. Yeah, this is something else I was gonna say. Um, just like how much um, this kind of like, because uh, I honestly get a little irritated to some extent how quickly people run to like, um, uh, how quickly we forget the dangers of Mars and Saturn because they do like one nice thing for somebody. You're like, okay, but there's a reason why. Um, but I often do wonder if some of this is uh, kind of informed by a developing world where a lot of the more like martial or Saturn type illnesses just really aren't as common because people have much more like access to nutrition than they did mm. before. Because a lot mm. of Saturn type diseases are actually what we would classify now as like mineral deficiencies or like nutrients deficiencies. Yeah. Um, and like now we have, it might not be the highest quality everywhere. Of course, you know, there's still places that suffer or struggle from like food insecurities, of course, but um, uh, on a whole, uh, one bad harvest isn't going to wipe you out anymore, you know, yeah. like, like wide areas of the world. So it's just going to wipe you out anymore. Um, so I do wonder how much of that is just um, being more connected with the, with the modern concerns where now we struggle yeah. with sort of like uh, abundance, consumption, yeah, overconsumption yeah. and abundance where before yeah. we kind of suffered from. Lack. And ease. <laughs> yeah. And look, I'm really cautious with Mars and Saturn. Most of my bad health stuff, I can, you know, I'm not saying they don't affect me by transit. And I'm very good at injury. Oh, you haven't and... ascended above Mars and Saturn yet? Come on, Kira. <laughs> they, you know, they've kicked my ass many a time. But I think the modern world has way too much venus and jupiter pleasure and lax lazy like we don't move we overeat we have too much sugar we have too much like there uh, you know we have access to so much more we're not fighting to get anything mm -hmm. and i mean there are places i'm talking about in the west here um 
our problem is too much, not too little. And I think that's where we can really bring Mars and Saturn in to temper that mm. and use that restrictive influence or that Mars action-y, you know, moving the body, sport. Yeah. You know, whether you want to put sport to Mars or to certain houses or certain signs, but it's all around that fire element and, and you know, Mars ruling the muscles and um, I don't know. Thoughts? Um, no direct, no, no, no real direct thoughts to that. I thought you did really well in uh, exploring that. Does nephropathy have uh, a... Uh, does it utilize like poison plants much at all? Um, if you're using homeopathy, yes. Mm. So as a naturopath, when I studied, I also became a homeopath, which is using micro dosages mm -hmm. or just energetic dosages of plants. And we use all, you know, we use lead and mercury and we use all the heavy metals and poisonous plants. Yes. Datura. Mm -hmm. Um, I was walking by one the other day, the trumpet flower. I want to call it stramonium. Yeah, massive, like this big flower. They all hang down. And yes, it's hallucinogenic. I have a friend who tried it in his teens and ended up in the hospital. Oh, it's not good. <laughs> I was pointing that out to my teenager the other day. Yeah. The it was. So, okay, that's interesting. Um, I was curious on how, um, yeah, like sort of yeah. what, what plants were on the table for you, I guess. Uh, a, a kind of maybe a weird way to say that when talking about like Mars or Saturn plants and a lot of uh, more poison oriented plants are Saturn ruled. Saturn. Yeah, I will. I will use. Um, yeah, I would. I will use them in a, not in a, you know, tea or a herbal. Liquid, right. Yeah. But but um, in homeopathy. Absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I'm a huge I'm a huge fan of homeopathy. I think that's. I think it's an underutilized system to work on all the levels of, you know, it's not physical, it's not just physical, it's emotional, it's mental, it's spirit, like, there's some amazing ways to use homeopathy, you know, yeah, and we go back, I'm familiar with. no, mm -mm, I'm not, yeah, and it has so many great links to, you know, there's Hahnemann who kind of invented modern homeopathy. But if you go back, Paracelsus was doing a lot, you know, it's all about dosages. And it's the idea that you divide something down into a smaller and smaller dosage, but you've put the dosages into a, um, an inert um, liquid. And so you've allowed the particles or the molecules of that to cross the gradient, to spread out across that space. And then you take a little bit of that and you dilute it again and a little bit of that and dilute <laughs> it again. And it's, so you only have the soul, the energetic imprint of that heavy metal or like lead is really common. Mercury is really common remedy, copper. We use them all. So you can actually use all the minerals that rule the planets in homeopathy. Hmm. We yeah. probably should use it more, but I, yeah, maybe there's a lecture in there. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Maybe so you want to drink down. some lead, Kira Sutherland. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but leadum is used for, yeah, when you've been pierced by something. Yeah. Oh. When, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Homeopathy. Mm. So there's been a few uh, medical astrologers who wrote on homeopathy. Interesting. I love how your cat moves the, the yeah. blind behind you. So it looks like a ghost. Is yeah. <laughs> yeah. My house is notoriously haunted by furry critters. But yeah. And recently you shared uh, on Instagram uh, several medical astrology books for International Book Day, um, which like what medical astrology books would you say have been most influential in, yeah. in your practice now? Like looking back, even if it didn't feel that way kind of at the time. Um. There was a few books I forgot to bring up and I couldn't figure out how to flip my video. I'm sure <laughs> all the Gen Zs probably were like cursing me for not flipping my video in that because I realized after it went up, everything's backwards. But I said the book titles. Um, the most influential book would probably be Jansky, which a lot of people aren't into because it's nutrition, not herbal medicine. So okay. Robert Jansky's Astrology Nutrition book. Uh, I just, I love it. Cornell with the big, the big 
how could you go by Cornell, right? The Virgo -y encyclopedia of medical astrology, but that doesn't teach you how to do stuff. Um, I really like <laughs> Heinrich Doth. Do you have a okay. Heinrich yeah. Doth? Book? I think I have that book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heinrich Doth. The little, um, uh, the thin kind of yellow one. Literally little. And there's another one. There's another one that I didn't hold up the other day. I'm trying, my bookshelf's just to my left. Um, it's a one name kind of made up name and I can't think <laughs> of it. Um, anyway, yeah, I, I, I think I said this in the video. I remember coming across Jane Ritter Patrick's mm. uh, handbook of medical astrology, but kind of five or six years into me studying it. And be, I had always thought, oh, yeah, eventually I'll write a book in medical astrology years later, you know. And um, I read her book and I was like, oh, the book I thought I wanted to write was already written. Already done, yeah. Isn't that so weird that, how that works? rocked my world, but <laughs> disappointed me. But it was good for me. It was a good schooling of do this for a lot longer before you mm -hmm. try to write. Uh, who else? You know, I, I held it up at the very beginning of that video, and it's a really simple book by Marsha Stark. was just really practical medical astrology, and I liked that. Yeah. I mean, Culpepper, I have to go there. But Sure, yeah. Okay, yeah. so. What about you? What about you in medical astrology? Oh, That's no. what I want to know. Oh, what do I mean, medical yeah. astrology? Oh, man. Okay, so I have to ask my follow-up, follow-up question, and feel free not to answer this. I will accept it as a political pleading the fifth. Um, have you ever purchased a medical astrology book that you were like disappointed in? And what was it? Because I'll tell you mine first, if it'll make you feel better. <laughs> if it'll make you feel more of a safe space, I will also throw myself under the bus. But it might not be I, the same because my person's dead. I have. Okay. <laughs> I have purchased one or two and gone real like. Sure. You know, yeah, yeah, or yeah. like they've gone off on tangents and made their own stuff up. And I've been like, where, where is, yeah. and that can be fine, from? but you have to say that, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, if you're going to, if you're going to do like your own thing, you have to say that, yeah. <laughs> but I can't think of who the author is. Mm, that's a safe answer. Oh, but I did, and I, <laughs> it is a safe answer. And I am a little, I do play it safe like that, but there's three or four that I've actually gotten rid. I don't save them. If I hate mm. them, I get rid of them. Oh, I do that too. Which is why I can't. Do you know what? This has nothing to do with medical astrology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what book? And I probably should go back and reread it, but I got rid of it. You know, when you oh. first learn about uh, it, um, Shulman. No, I don't know this name. Uh, oh, Shulman, regular astrology, book on the nodes, which I quite like. A couple of books, book on retrograde planets. Oh no, not good. Thank God. Not I good. Keep it away. I was like, oh my God, if I believe this, I might as well go kill myself right oh, now. Oh, like it oh, was okay. so negative. I was like, I can't read this. Yeah, yeah, that's a downer. That's the book. So when you say what books in astrology have you read that you hated? And yeah, maybe <laughs> that wasn't so my answer, but I love that. Or that wasn't my question, <laughs> but I love that how that was your interpretation of my question. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's just not medical. Yeah, yeah, I just, yeah. I can't think of any medical books. I can think of books that were just a bit disappointing, but it wasn't, yeah, or it just wasn't where I was at. But mm, not yeah. not like this Shulman book worked, like it messed me up for a little uh, bit. And people yeah. are probably listening going, that's because you have retrograde this and you <laughs> Everybody has retrograde planets, newsflash. <laughs> yeah, I know, but like- it, it, it was on inner retrograde planets and oh, it was like oh, oh, it was oh. so negative it was so sad oh. it's a great question though mm. okay okay Frank so my Clifford has a story like that of somebody writing some sentence under something that is like diabolical i'll let him you can ask him that question yourself oh, oh okay my i think you? my my most disappointing medical astrology book purchase was probably um the cornell's encyclopedia medical astrology book Oh really? Uh, yeah, I hated it, and I felt it was it was it's a, hard. I, I purchased it at a time when I didn't really have a lot of money to be spending on books. Uh, oh, right, but I was yeah. like getting interested in like medical astrology, and I found a copy of it for what I thought Ugh. was a was an okay price, and maybe it wasn't. Um, mine's Massive. hardcover. Oh, I have the hardcover too. <laughs> I actually um, own two. Okay, yeah. wow. Okay, nerd. <laughs> um, 
but uh so yeah I purchased this book kind of at a time when I didn't really have a whole bunch of money to spend on books mm. and but I was like oh this will be good this will like I think I was approaching it like investment for my future whatever that means like yeah. kind of a thing and I got it and kind of like you said before like you can't use it you know what I mean? Uh, it doesn't like, teach you how doesn't, to do like, anything. Teach you anything. Tell, yeah, no, it should so, be actually called the dictionary rather than encyclopedia. So for those who are unfamiliar with this book, it's basically like the, it's the size. Yeah, it's the size of the book that Kira held up. It's huge. But when you open it, all it is, is it's like somebody's medical, like uh, assignments of medical conditions. Yeah, it's to, like rulership. Like, it's, yeah, it's almost yeah. a rulership book. Yeah, an advanced like medical rulership book. Um, but do you know but what I else is really irritating? Super, that it's not flipped around, that it's not like sorted by, um, because it's it's sorted alphabetically by like medical condition or something, right? Yeah. Super unhelpful. Flip it. I need it sorted by like planet or planetary configuration. Oh. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I, I don't mind the medical bit, obviously, but what I find irritating is half of the things you look up, it tells you to go see something else. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like Veruca, see warts. Vesicles, see aneurysms. Wandering gout, see arms under gout. Like half of what you want to look up, you have to go okay, somewhere else. Okay, I guess. Else. And that one Who probably also has a see this on that? it. And then you're just like yeah. flipping back and forth like a choose your own adventure book. Yeah. Anabolism, see constructive metabolism. Like it's okay. literally <laughs> every other entry. Who has the time to do that though? That's what I, that's like a Virgo. I do love, he's Virgo rising. He was a Virgo rising. Oh, was he for real? Yeah. Well, there you have he's it. Virgo rising. I think he's sun in in Leo. I can't read, but I love I love an author that gives you his oh chart cool yeah in the beginning of the book. Oh yeah, I forgot that was there. Yep, there it is. I love it. That's like here I am. <laughs> but that Virgo rising is just beautiful, right? Moon in Pisces. Yeah. But yeah, that's my that's my most disappointing medical astrology book. I still have it for some reason. Oh God, you can't it, get rid of that. It makes a great paperweight. <laughs> and it's incredible. Or if you have to put your computer up on something high to video properly. I use it a lot to take pictures of things, like to put on top of like for them to sit on yeah. behind, like underneath like a like a tablecloth. Yeah. Like so that's what that's what I use it a lot for. There's two naturopathic textbooks that are even bigger than this. And you see photos of all these naturopaths in Australia, their office and their computers are always up on both of those books. <laughs> nice. We need to come Standing up with like a the, standard set stand for that for astrologers to have. Yeah. What <laughs> books they should be on. I'm trying to think what else really disappoint. I can't. Yeah. No. Another book that was really good that isn't talked about that much anymore is Eileen Nauman. I'm she wrote a really her. big tome on medical astrology, a big blue book it's in that video. Yeah. Just really practical. But they, I mean, I love the old ones, deciphering the language of the old books. Mm. And Gra oh, another book, Graham Tobin's book. On oh, Culpepper. Uh, Culpepper Medicine. Gee, that's a beautiful book. Yeah. Yeah. I also really enjoyed, oh, look, at, I got into a thing where I was really into like biographies for a while. Oh, yeah. um, and that's how I not that's how I got or that's how I found um Culpepper's medicine um also but um the prince of medicine which is like a, a biography of uh Galen of Pergamum that was really oh. fascinating oh I don't have that uh, yeah see now I have to the prince of medicine yeah. um I did buy um uh, some books by like Avicenna and Galen yeah. or books written about their nutritional philosophies. Yeah. I haven't quite made it through there uh, yet, but yeah. Yeah. You haven't read the that's canon? What I... oh. mm -mm. Bad look. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like trying to read um, some homeopathy books. There's a book oh. called the, or the Organon, which is the guy who kind of created homeopathy as we know it as a modern, you know, ha Hahnemann, even though he probably got all his stuff from Paracelsus. Sure. And Hahnemann wrote the Organon, which are all the rules of homeopathy. And they're, they're like, when you do your degree, you have to do all this stuff with it. And it's yeah, oh, interesting. a painful book to get through. Mm. So it's philosophy. the Cornell book of, of homeopathy. No, but it's philosophical. Not oh, philosophy. oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's more the philosophy and directions of healing, but in a really weird, I shouldn't say weird, but yeah, 
Okay. Your okay. your knowledge of cold pepper and herbs is oh. phenomenal. Oh, I remember no. just for your listeners to know, you know, <laughs> as a non-herbalist, as a non-trained herbalist, you have such a beautiful understanding of herbs and their astrological principles. I actually that's, think you're better better than me at it. Wow, that's very sweet of you to say. And mm. uh, your check is in the mail for that. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's a it's a very fun kind of world to go into and you know like dig back and kind of explore and adapt for you know modern day uh, uses and. And when you work with clients, so when you Uh-oh. just you know I'm going to flip it and ask okay. a question. When you work with <laughs> clients, do you suggest herbs? Um, not really because I can't legally. Right. Yeah. Like that's always a weird, that's always a, and this is something, this is also something I want to talk with you about kind of, uh, especially in America, you gotta be super Yeah. Yeah. So I, I really can't, um, and I don't really try to, but you know, I know enough to, to be able to answer questions. So Mm. that's kind of how I more like look at it or like approach it. Um, to where like, if somebody has been kind of looking for their own things or is like, oh, what do you think yeah. about this, Ryan? It's like, okay, well then here's information yeah. that I can like provide. That's a little bit more like yeah. and not prescriptive. And yeah. then ultimately I can be like, you know, I think this might not be a great idea or, you know, <laughs> I, I like this, but ultimately it's up to you to, you know, figure yeah. out what, what you want to yeah. do kind of a thing. Yeah. So well, it's a really, it. it's a bit of a scary thing, but you could also kind of suggest Oh, here's three herbs that fit that profile. You go read about them and decide for yourself. Yeah. Ask yeah. your doctor okay. about these. Yeah. Uh, ask your doctor about if these interfere with your medicine, any medicine that you're on. Yeah, which like is that. scary. Polypharmacy. Yeah. Like that's my biggest thing. Even with teaching medical astrology, I'm always like, this is education. This right, is right. not prescription. I mean, I do do prescription. But you're, but I'm in, it's I'm exactly insured. right. Yeah. <laughs> and it became this huge thing with the internet because we then, all of a sudden I had all these American clients and I was like, oh my God, how I got to make sure what insurance is covering for where. And I'm still incredibly and will forever be incredibly cautious Mm. about suggestions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you just have to, that's just the nature of it all, Um, you know, for good or bad for, you know, for every, for every one person who's trying to make, help people make informed decisions. There's Countless well, others who are just trying to that. take people's money and doesn't really care. So, you know, good and bad. Oh. <laughs> like all of our, all of the imitating accounts on Instagram. Uh, all of those. Do you have a bunch of those? Oh, every week. Do you really? Every single week. Oh, I that must one. be so cool. <laughs> that must be it's... like so cool and also super frustrating and scary and annoying. I know that it's there's. Super frustrating. I, I don't have yeah. any. I've, I don't, I've never had any that I know about. Um, yeah. And so to me, to have, I'm going to make one and <laughs> pretend just so you can know the feeling. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and maybe it's just like my Leo planets talking, but it's like, man, if I could have like an imitator, I will have made it because somebody will think that they, that I I'm worth imitating. <laughs> yeah. I thought somebody else said that recently. They're like, oh, I made it into the club yeah. of being imitated. Yeah. It's, um, I'm in the process of trying to apply for that blue tick. That you will pay for, but look, mm. if paying for the blue tick stops me from answering twenty emails when people so nicely, oh, is you know, that why it's send in your you Instagram. a screenshot? Is it? I think it is. Is is that why you have the? Oh Which, my gosh! So you, oh. I have two Instagram pages. No, 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 no. That's not what I mean. That. You don't have to share that. Um, but what I mean is, where am I? Where? I'm trying. You have a. Don't you have a thing in your in your Instagram bio about it? Yeah, it says yeah. I will never DM yeah, exactly. you for, for readings or for that I got this special juju about you and I needed yeah, to tell you Yeah, I never DM something. for readings or money it says. And yeah, yeah, I saw that. I saw that um and that I wanted that, I wanted to ask you about that too because I was curious about what that like what that experience is like or oh, like if it's something that you continuously a- deal with. It's a waste of my time and energy. Like I prefer to be, re- you know, writing or, you know, seeing clients, but you have to deal with, you know, I do little videos on it every now and then because the, the sad thing is people, yeah, pe- you know, I then go to report it, but they block me, you know, they will typically create a fake account, but block the main account that they're imitating. Right. And then, so you have to go in through friends accounts or get somebody else to go in and report them. And it can take weeks. Mm. And, yeah. There was um, also yeah. like a thing, I think this was a little bit more specific with Twitter, but it might've also been with Instagram, but there was like a period of time where a bunch of uh, astrology content creators or posters were saying that a lot of their content was being like um, throttled 
Like it wasn't reaching yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. And I was like, this is why, like, because like also during this time, there's so many like impersonator accounts. It's like, this is why, yeah. because these accounts yeah. with these names, like if you had this big influx of like astrology type accounts being marked as fake, yeah. they're going to try to hold back on astrology type content to keep people like to yeah. keep more people safe. And that it was actually, a really interesting. Yeah. That actually happens in the health alternative health side oh, yeah. as well and like when you're trying to actually place an ad now on instagram or facebook about like an upcoming workshop or something you can't you used to be able to kind of really be prescriptive about who you wanted yeah. to advertise to and they've really blocked a lot of that even within health and nutrition and naturopathy i can't target that's the word i can't target ads the set not that i do a lot of ads but if i'm running a mm -hmm. workshop i'll i'll pay so that it, you know they're limiting us so much but yeah yeah. 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 But back to her. <laughs> back to the fun stuff. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sure, you all, knowledge. I'm sure everybody yeah. was really interested in that, but yeah. I, I am interested. No, but it is. Yeah. But no, I'm going to say this for everybody. No astrologers out there are DMing people no. about needing a read or that I had a vision about you or anything. So be, everybody be so careful. It's such bad juju, but I love yeah. that. I love that. Listen, we, if I, if I, if account with my name ever DMs you and it's not about a cat, <laughs> no, it's not me. <laughs> But okay, back yeah. to herbs and okay. not, the, herbs, not the background. Nutrition, medical astrology. Yeah, so it all combined together. It just, it's interesting where it evolves to and where you go play with it. And, and I'm always learning, always reading more too. It's amazing. amazing. Okay, so this could be another question that we can go to. One thing that I think is interesting is the lack of like continual education in astrology. And yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure I actually had a question there, but uh, that, but now that I got that out, no, but, but I'm like, how do you, do you, would you say that you mostly sort of like improve your skill or, um, you know, expand your, uh, I don't know what a good word for the toolbox, I guess, um, yeah. via more like direct, like experience with consultations, or is it something that you more kind of pick up and try out, um, through like reading, like reading material? Oh, I think both. I think you get so many great big moments of watching how it expresses itself through doing readings. Um, I definitely learn a lot about its workings that way. But I do. I try to read a lot of books. I take other people's classes. Um, I want to, you know, if I go to a conference, I will literally go to every medical talk that exists in yes. the car. I would, I do do, as I call it, there's medical astrology and regular astrology. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's how I term that. Normal regular astrology. Ast regular astrology. Baby astrology, some might say. <laughs> uh, regular astrology encompasses all types of astrology except medical. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Just because. <laughs> Those are my two categories. So um, Medical astrology and, uh, and everything else. <laughs> yeah, so... I will go to every medical talk I can and then I'll, yeah. And then I will go to some regular talks as well. So I think there's so much to learn from how other people be them, be they practitioners or astrologers that do medical, just their different insight or they have found some old technique that I didn't even know about, or like I gave, you know, I gave a talk at the last ESAR conference mm -hmm on something that I had figured out, I hadn't invented something new because there's nothing new to invent, but I had applied <laughs> something astrological that wasn't really medical onto something to do with females or pe people that menstruates anatomy and physiology. And I was like, oh, I know all this science here. Let me line this up here and do this. And then and I was like, oh, this is this is what I've been doing for the last couple of years with this, you know, thinking I kind of put these together and my brain works in layers. Yeah, yeah. And then Freedom Cole came up and pulled the rug out from under you. <laughs> it did. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, I know you were really excited about what you figured out, but the Vedic figured that out 2,000 <laughs> years ago. It's different on a slice. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I was, I was like, was freedom, there. that's amazing. It was a timing technique to do with the moon, but I was using it for like female physiology to do with something. And he's like, oh, not He's like, no, no, we actually do that. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I didn't know that. It's like, yeah, we're on the same team, obviously. Like, that's why, that's how I knew. <laughs> are, and I don't care. I wasn't trying to name something the Kira method, right? There's yeah, the <laughs> right. Um, Can you imagine? Just the audacity. 
I do not have the ego that will invent anything new in medical astrology. Like but that. um, but yeah, freedom was like dot dot dot, and I was like, oh, that's so fucking amazing. Okay, so um, sort of like the the continual education aspect for you is is kind of a mixture of both, and you just kind of take what sounds good and try to yeah. you know test it in your own um, yeah your and- your own case notes and things like that. And the other, the thing where I get really into a topic, this sounds funny, but I'll commit to a lecture and that forces me to go find everything on that topic. I'll have my base knowledge that I want to get, I'm not going to suggest a lecture that I don't know anything on, Mm. but you know, when an organization is like, oh, do a medical lecture, you don't, you can't keep doing the same lectures again and again. So I'm like, oh, I'll do it on this. And then I literally pull out 30 books to look at what regular astrology had to say, what, you know, what am I missing medically that I can't remember? And that I find is my best, it sounds terrible, but that's some of my best continuing education (laughs) is forcing myself into a pinpoint topic Mm. to get a different angle versus my bigger picture of what I use it for every day. Mm, I'm similar. Don't feel bad. I do it similarly, Um, mostly because you have to like figure out because you you prove you um what's my word you submit your topic like like your lecture topics months in a year, advance a year in and advance sometimes a sometimes. year in advance um and so it's like you have to kind of figure out like what am I going to be interested in in you know 10 months from now that I'm going to want to talk about no. so it's, it's I've, I've I've been I've been I've done very similar things where it's like well I, I kind of I'm interested in this, but I don't know a whole lot about it right now. Yeah. And over that time, you're just like, here we go. Now I'm going to, I will be the expert on this thing. Yeah. Um, like I followed Hygieia. Now you probably don't use, do you use Hygieia? No. Yeah, of course not. <laughs> this is freaking modern, you know, interpretation. Modern Uzi what's it? <laughs> do you use Whatever. Chiron? No. Uh-uh. But you use the outers. No, ma'am. <laughs> oh, are no, no. we allowed to be friends? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But no, I have like a, like a ritual practice with Hygieia. So, but I don't have like a, like an astrological oh, practice. Yeah. So I, I'm not huge on lots of asteroids. And I mean, I, I, I think it's amazing when people do all of that, but I, you know, Hygieia is this goddess of healing um, and Asclepius's daughter who was, you know, the god of medicine or was he physical and then mm-hmm. turned into a god, you know, the whole mythology around him. But I put her into people's charts for a decade to watch what happened or was she a trigger or what was she doing with people's medical stuff. And not even that I could tell you what was happening, but I just I spent the last decade watching her as a trigger point in people natally or by transit. It takes about five and a half years to go around. Mm -hmm. And so then I finally a year ago went, I'll write a lecture on Hygieia after I watched her for 10 years and then I had to go back and find anybody's writing on Hygieia that I had found um and um and kind of put together the mythology her mythology so that was fun to go dive into you know we're all history buffs we're all mythology yeah buffs. to some extent you have going to back into the mythology of Hygieia and her dad and the whole it was like a lineage of it's the lineage of healers yeah. right and was really sacred going back and teaching me that and uh, teaching myself that and and yeah I interviewed one or two people about Hygieia more mythologically than anything else and and put put together so I I wrote I did it last year I did a lecture um, on it and um, for uh, I did it for the FAA Australia Mm. and um, yeah, that was fun. That was my first foray into a topic that other people have given lectures on her, not yeah, yeah. first. But having been a practitioner of the healing arts for so long and then getting <laughs> to work with her. And truly what it came down to is I think she's our, our naturopath. But I'm gonna see I'm gonna see that in her because that's what I am. So um you wanna hear something really funny? Yeah. So this this well after you mentioned like the asteroid Hygieia, I was like, oh, I should go see where Hygieia is in my chart. I've, I don't think I've ever looked before. Yeah. Because um, there was a time when I was okay. So, oh, if anybody like replays this back at me, I will I will lie about it. I will deny it. But there was a time when I was kind of early-ish into astrology where I was really into asteroids. Mm-hmm. And so like That's the okay. like the first four, you, like you learn mm-hmm. all about. So that was that was baby Ryan astrology, but I'll deny it now. 
But anyway, so I was like, I don't think I've ever seen Hygieia in my chart. Um, I have Hygieia in an exact trine with my natal sun. Oh, like, no, like exact trine, like like degree minute. <laughs> oh, wow, that's funny. That's funny. In All right, house. in the ninth house. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So isn't that interesting? Yeah. And she's, so she's your, you know, she's your own. So I really see her as a place of where we go to for healing but oh, that's also where we need to learn about <laughs> yeah where we go to for healing and you know um and she's about ritual right she's she's yeah. you know about daily practice of health she's the she's you know she's that's very funny. virgo-y seven six house <laughs> application of fasting and cleansing and she you know she rules hygiene i love me a good fast yeah. yeah. That <laughs> so that's fun. That's yeah. fun. Um, yeah. So um, let me see. What else have we yeah, talked about? That's how I educate myself. Educate. Yeah. Talking to other astrologers. Oh my God. The best. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And just hearing what other people are focusing on or, but yeah, I paid for a lot of lectures of, oh, I was listening to a lecture by Kelly earlier today. Uh -huh. Kelly Surtees. Kelly Surtees. Who's one of my best friends in astrology. But and then she, if she'll pop, she'll email me. She's like, "Why have you paid for that?" I <laughs> just ask that. me. And you I'm can like, have it because <laughs> I just wanted it in that moment. So there was my thirty dollars. Yeah, that's cute. That's cute. I was yeah. just watching her lecture on um, planetary joys. Oh, okay. Which is really nice, actually. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. There There's go. so many topics we all know, yeah. but a review by somebody else is like so important. Uh, so one thing that I'm really interested in kind of talking with uh, like other astrologers about is like um, the, the topics of like success and failure. I think it's a topic yeah. that not many people think about um, or like are willing to kind of talk about. I think it's sure. one of those like more taboo areas, kind of like money, even though I think maybe the astrological community is a little bit better when it comes to like We're money better clarity. than we used to be. Yeah. Better, much yeah. better than we used to be. Um, and so I'm interested in hearing like some of your like stories or like thoughts about um, some of your like best successes as an astrologer. And then like also coupled with some situations that you see as like failures <laughs> My bad decisions. and how you've kind of, <laughs> how you've, how you've learned from that or like what you've. Um, yeah, that's yeah. a great, no, I like that. That's a great question. <laughs> Getting myself organized online. Like, okay. I mean, it's been so different. The last five to seven years, the landscape has totally changed in astrology, right? Like it used to be, you had to find a face-to-face -face teacher and it, right. and it, you know, it, um, it was so much harder to access students, right? Whereas now you can run something online and there's people from all over the world that sign up and it's amazing. So Probably my best business success was realizing I don't have to do it all myself. And I hired someone to organize my whole back end and who understood systems. And but my best success was learning. I didn't have to do it all myself. Oh, I mean, yeah. I create all the astrology yeah. lectures myself, but hiring somebody to be my back end Virgo. <laughs> <laughs> sure, um, sure, sure. That is amazing because I'm not a little picture person. I'm not, I'm such a big picture person. I, I, I can't, I struggle with detail. So I think my biggest success is hiring people to help me where I have my weaknesses. Sure. Um, but that's a bit boring a thing to say. Um, <laughs> I think one of the hardest things, I don't know if this is success or failure. One of the hardest things for me to realize was that people actually wanted like to believe in myself enough to teach mm. or that I had like, I, I, I'll get a really, I'll fangirl other lecturers <laughs> who have been around a lot longer. I think everybody, I'm one of these people who always thinks everybody knows more than me. And so then I start having imposter syndrome. I do imposter syndrome really well, even though I know I have a lot of knowledge, I'm always in that fear. I don't know enough. And I think one of my best successes is, acknowledging that I feel that way and still trying to do stuff. And if people want it, it's going to be there. And I found people want it. So um, failures, I'm sure I have some. Nothing sticking out. I'll think about it in the middle of the night tonight. <laughs> like, I, oh, that one. <laughs> I, I think 
one of the important things more than a failure success is we is learning like we have this whole online community now which is amazing but I hear a lot of people struggling and again money is a really tricky thing for a lot of us going to conferences or going to retreats I think is a thousand times the benefit of what we pay for it and I know we a lot of us have to save up Mm -hmm. and I think but I think a lot of online people need to hear that that Going to a conference isn't like, oh, my God, the conference costs $400 and then my accommodation and then my flights, try flying from Australia, (laughs) Um, (laughs) that there is no money to be had in going to a conference, even for a lecturer, unless like the only time a lecturer makes money at a conference is is if they're doing pre or post conference workshops. Not the only time. That's I'm not I'm not being mean about this. I'm just saying. Oh no, it's you know, it's uh, it's true it's, though. I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, and we it's amazing because we if you lecture, you do get paid, but you get and you get to go to the conference for free. But it's it's all the connection and meeting other people and being with your family in the physical and like like you, you're like my astro brother. I didn't know I was uh, missing until Isar. Until Isar. You know, we need. You know, I think one of the beautiful things of astrology is is this is our community or our family. And um, in person is just, it's like nothing else. And I think this isn't good or bad business, but I think it's good business to take yourself to some in-face conferences. There aren't that many at the moment after COVID, but right. I think that's some of the best money I ever spent. So it does come down to good, good <laughs> business is getting myself to conferences, whether I was invited to lecture and I went, or I, you know, I went to UAC before I was in 2012, before I was invited to lecture. And um, we were at UAC at the involved. same time. See, we were there and too. I you just, were out there somewhere and you weren't looking for me. No, I was with <laughs> Kelly. I was hanging out with Kelly. I was surprised I didn't meet you through her. And Jane, I hung out with Jane Ritter Patrick a bit. And that's crazy. Hmm, I know. Were you lecturing? Not in 2012. Yeah, no, I, I didn't lecture 2012. Um, have I applied to lecture. Yeah, there's uh, your answer. Not pick me. Oh. No, no, no. Yes. That, that, that's good too. Um, <laughs> I've happens. also been rejected from a conference. So, you know, we have that. Yeah. We have that in common. It happens. Yeah. Uh, no, my actual question was going to, that, that's a much better, like that's, that's a much more interesting question. Um, yeah. But my, I was like, if, have, if you had ever had a conference pay for your ticket from Australia. No, they no. won't. Yeah. They won't. Um, for those of you not living in Australia, <laughs> a, an economy ticket back to the U.S., round trip is usually two and a half thousand dollars oh sorry in american it would be just under two you know one and a half to two and you're stuck in a little plane seat for four four, 14 hours yeah so they won't even um, pay for my ticket and it's like two hundred dollars so it's fine (laughs) yeah no there's no tickets getting paid yeah no but it's the same in naturopathy i get invited i will get flown around australia to speak in naturopathy um but um, yeah, it's interesting because I live in two worlds, right? right? I actually, I have this whole other, not other career, because to me, they all blend, but I'm really well known in Australia and in naturopathy and <laughs> sports. I'm actually a sports nutritionist as well. And so, um, yeah, I get invites to go do that. But again, it's, it's um, so it's interesting to see two different worlds and how they invite you to speak and what happens. But yeah. how is it? Is it different or is it the same? More or less? Uh, similar, similar. Yeah, it's similar. It's, um, but they do pay for you to get, to, they pay. Yeah. They pay oh, for your nice. hotel. They pay for your, all your, they pay all your travel expenses and, um, some conferences don't pay you to speak, but they pay for everything else oh. very generously, but no uh-huh. actual speaker fee. You know, whereas I think I would other, prefer that. Yeah. <laughs> whereas other times they do, they do do travel fees, but not, not a huge amount, but then you do get paid and you do get, yeah. Naturopathy pays better. Oh, of course it does. Um, In, in speaker fees, but that's, it's a different industry. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I'm, it's interesting to hear. I, I mean, maybe not that they that they that they do things very similarly. Astrology conferences and naturopathy conferences, um, and I wonder how much of that is just because um, of like astrology conferences trying to frame themselves similarly as like um, like psychology conferences or something like that, like yeah. trying to like repeat that framework. Uh, how much of that kind of lingers from? I'm 19, sure. 1960s, I'm sure because... 1970s kind of attempts to do psychological astrology a bit more. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I hadn't really thought about it. I mean, every conference does it a little bit differently as well. Sure. And 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 it's kind of fun that it's all, yeah, it's all a bit different. But yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. But yeah. And it's such a it's such a honor to be asked to speak at a conference, right? Yeah, oh that God. definitely it's it's definitely one of those like I've made it moments when you get your when you get your first lecture. Um, at a conference, have, even if it's at 8 a.m. and almost nobody is there. <laughs> I have to tell you, my very first. So this is how, uh, yeah, my whole, oh, my God, am I good enough thing. So I got asked to speak at my first conference, which was in Sydney, Australia, where I live. So um, and it was the big Australian conference run by the Federation of Australian Astrologers. I'm so excited. You know, you get your one little conference slot. Oh, excited. I turned in, of all things I turned in to do decumbature, even though that's not my specialty. Why I volunteered that one, I don't know. So decumbature, and I was so excited. And, and this is a big international conference. And again, I don't know about, I don't know, you know, we've talked about conferences and do they fly you or not. In Australia, we might fly internationals. I don't actually know that. I've never asked anybody. So, um, but anyway, so the conference, I was so excited. I was speaking at my first conference and the schedule comes out. So for anybody who doesn't speak at conferences, when the schedule comes out, it's a big thing to mm. look at what time slot you have. Is it just after lunch? Is it early morning? Who else is speaking and what topics the are they? The big thing is who else is speaking <laughs> and what are their topics? And are you up against the granddaddies yes. and grandmamas of like that everybody, you know, the big international speakers, because I was yeah. a local speaker. <laughs> I open up the schedule. <laughs> it's literally Kira Sutherland, Richard Tarnas. Oh no. Lynn Bell, oh. Demetra George, <laughs> and Robert Ham. It was like it was like you couldn't I like it it was it was literally all four of the big internationals that were coming. And then me. And, and you know, when you're a new speaker, they put you in little tiny rooms as well. And I was like, oh, my God, I started crying when I read it. I called my girlfriend who studies, who had studied at the same time as me. And I was like, oh, my God, Morel. Oh, she goes, I'm sure it's not too bad. It's not too bad. I'm sure. Just tell her. She's a Pisces. Totally positive. She, just tell me who it is. But I'll, and I'll be honest. <laughs> just tell me who I'll it is. I'll be honest. <laughs> and I read her. I read her the list. And she goes, no, you're fucked. <laughs> like yeah that's bad that's not good she goes you'll be lucky to get three yeah she goes, don't worry i've been to conferences and walked in and i've seen a speaker only have three people and and it happens kira so don't worry about it so i was like oh okay don't worry about it <laughs> but like she was she's like the nicest mama bear really gentle person and she was like no you're fucked <laughs> so how many people did come it was fine robert hand uh had something come up and he couldn't come out oh nice okay no so, no it <laughs> it ended up I had heaps of people I had she actually was like I'll come and I'll bring these two people to buff out your numbers for you like she actually was going to come and just <laughs> sit on the seats for me and she showed up five minutes before the talk and the room was it wasn't a big room but it was almost full right and she yeah. was like you don't can we go do something else? Yeah, can I go do something else? Demetra George is talking. <laughs> exactly. So she left me and Richard Tarnas. That's so funny. um yeah, so that was my that's your worst nightmare. And I have to admit, I don't, and I'd be curious if you're like this. I still have a fear that no one's gonna come to my job. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, like absolutely. to this day, I sit there and as soon as about 10 people walk in the room, my stress level drops <laughs> to a different level. And then the next 10 walk in and I'm like, oh, okay, I can let go now. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think that's funny. a normal thing. But yeah, it's absolutely just just terrifying. Uh, no, my first conference lecture was at 8 a.m. The conference starts at 9 normally, but they just did like new people at like f first thing. So yeah. I was like, how many people? And it, of course, it's Sunday morning. 
Oh, after the big Saturday after the night, big after yes, the big Wednesday. party. So usually the organize the usually the organizers of the conference do like a big party on Saturday night of the conference if it ends Sunday. And uh, astrologers drink. Let's that, get that clear. There, there. It's not. It's not healthy. It's not healthy. No, there's but they, nothing naturopathic <laughs> about there's no, Saturday night. <laughs> there's nothing naturopathic about it. But yeah, so I was like, who is even going to be here? Kind of like a similar thing. Uh, I wasn't yeah. against, I wasn't up against, you know, the heavyweights, the four powers, we'll call them. Um, <laughs> but I was just like, who is even going to be? Who's even, I'm barely up at 8 a.m., uh, you know, and I have to be here. You to aren't be up at 8 a.m. What are you talking about? I'm not, not anymore. You not probably a, not... were still awake from the night before. <laughs> uh, so what is something that you're doing now that you're excited about? I am, I've been saying this for a year, but I'm truly within a month of finishing writing my first medical story. Okay. Book. I was going to ask you about this separately. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, a whole month. Years. Okay. Good. I'm, my deadline is the end of May. Okay. Um, Any particular reason? Was the end of April. Just because if I don't give myself a deadline, I'll never do it. Okay. Um, and it's not a big tome on medical astrology that can come at another time, but it's on the houses mm -hmm. because I think, I think, and I think this because of 30 years of clinical practice, I think the houses have such an influence on our physical body and our health, and it's not discussed enough. And I'm not, this is not about what house system we use. No, go into it. <laughs> I will leave that conversation for other astrologers. That's like, I'm, a, I'm, you don't like this, I know, but I'm an, not an atheist. I'm ag non agnostic. <laughs> agnostic, what is it? yeah, not, sure. Yeah, I'm, I like whatever works for people. I have the systems that I like and I use them, um, but that's too hot of a topic for me. What I'm talking about is the actual houses in the chart and how they are so correlated to body parts and where things go wrong. And and um, and I'm also writing up for a perspective of then how to make a planet happy while it's in a house. Because you can have planets that are in detriment or they're, you know, you know, not in their joy and, you know, all the different ways to assess a planet. You know, there's many different ways to assess planets. Mm in a house but we can get so depressed about that like you you know i've got this and it's not in this and it's in this, you know like we can be so sad about how depleted or de in detriment a planet is you still own that planet in that sign in that house you still <laughs> you you still have to go do something with it and so i love using houses for trying you might not have ever heard me say this unless you've been in one of my lectures. Uh -uh. You, I think of planets as all your little children, or you're the teacher, mm -hmm. like you are the or you you are the conductor in an orchestra, and your chart is like this orchestra that's got to play its symphonies. But every little planet, every little person in that orchestra, really wants a solo. Oh. and wants to be they want to be heard like every planet wants to be acknowledged in our chart yet we can get so negative on certain aspects and planets and placements that we're like oh my god that's my it's in so much trouble it's the the ones that are in trouble that cause you to, you know they're the ones that cause they want to be paid attention to and they cause problems if you don't pay attention to them. So I love using the houses for an idea of how to take a planet out to play. How can I go make that okay. planet feel heard and expressed? And so let's look at that planet in that sign with those aspects, but let's look at the stage of the house and what body, what area, what zones of the body is that representing and also, and how is that expressing, but also what activities can make that planet happier or what foods or what herbs or, so yeah, I'm kind of, and I never planned to be a house focused astrologer, but just in doing hundreds, if not thousands of charts over the years, medically, I've just, I love the houses. I've fallen in love with, like, I think they have so much more to say medically than, than we realize. How do you feel about houses? I feel about I've houses. Told, now that I've told you there. <laughs> now that I've told you child. all the direct, now that I've told you all the correct answers to give on the quiz. Um, you know, I don't, super, uh, mm, 
I mean, yeah. I guess I do to to an extent. Um, but yeah, I, I I I guess I I will have to admit that I have. Um, it's not normally a focus. Probably not emphasized houses as much as they deserve to be. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, you get other astrologers that's all about the aspects, mm -hmm. right? Like, I mean, I'm always looking at aspects, but I have friends that are like, it's all about the aspects. Whereas often I've seen what they've seen, but I've seen it from the house rather than the aspect. You know, like we mm -hmm. all have our areas that our brain goes to. And again, maybe this is my big picture brain of the houses rather than I'm not saying sure. I'm talking about aspects, but but, um, you know, the psychological astrologers love the aspects because it's how those, you know, yeah. Those psychological astrologers. <laughs> I don't know friends who are psychological. Always causing trouble. Yeah. So that's what I'm excited about. So that's the deadline for it. That's the deadline you're yeah. doing it for it. Is there any sort of like uh, uh, ETA for uh, publication? Book? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Couple months after that, yeah, twenty twenty three. Oh, okay, but your but your goal is to get it out by the end of the year. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, it's not going to be that big. Um, because yeah, you talked about it. Um, kind of more, or the way you described it to me before was like a sort of like booklet. a, a, a yeah, booklet like a chapter of a much larger book to yeah. kind of get you into the. I'm scared. You've done, you've I'm done one, and then you've done another. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's pulling easy the to, band aid off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the first one's always the hardest. I have thousands of lectures. I have thousands of hours of lectures I've given. I have probably enough information to write 30 books, mm. but I'm always too busy lecturing and seeing clients to write. And I think I'm scared of writing a little bit for some reason. So yeah. it's, I got to jump over that hurdle this year. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, hopefully you find an easy hurdle to jump through or over whatever one does with hurdles. Um, I'm, I'm, I know that it's going to be a, a beautifully... Uh, informative fun. booklet uh, that I hope you that I I hope you get this the response and support for that project that you're looking for to help you kind of catapult to finishing like the whatever whatever it is that you see as your magnum opus yeah uh, in the future that's other stuff yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so it's tricky it's tricky balancing that I don't know do you find are you writing any books I mean you've got your beautiful cards that have just come out and yes um and I find it very difficult for me to do multiple things at once. Um, even though that was my preferred method of working on things for a long time was doing mm. a kind of a little bit of a lot of things at once. Um, if that makes sense, like I would work on one project for like a little bit a day and then I'd do another one and I would you know, like kind of cycle between a few different things. My ghost is back. Mm. Um, but um I realized that that wasn't really working very well for me. It was just causing me a lot of anxiety. So now I try to do what I call one damn thing at a time. Yeah. And I need to do that. That's what I actually <laughs> need to do. Right. Yeah. And so that's yeah. been my, that's been my, full my, my, it's, it's been very difficult for me to, to focus on that, but that's been my, I, I can say that I've been more successful with that than mm. trying to juggle multiple things. Sometimes I try to do it by the days of the week. Do you I try to do that? something like that too. Um, my biggest thing was just like, I never felt like I was getting anything finished. Mm -mm. Like I always felt like that I was just piling more onto, like more onto the plate that I was never like finishing any, any one thing. Yeah. Um, and so it became much easier to sort of like list and prioritize things, um, yeah. that way. So yeah, mm. hopefully you're, mm. uh, are you still taking a break from consultations to do it like, or no, I'm just back. May, oh. Oh, May no. started consultations. I know. And I, the whole thing was no clients for four months in order to finish yeah. this book and it and it didn't other stuff happen so mm. i didn't quite as get it, it done as it does um but yeah i did something very similar where like the the last i took off like the last half of march to like focus that's, on something that's else. like two weeks i know yeah. i know i know but i and i sound like it's a big thing right i'm like i yeah. took off the last half of march look at me <laughs> I, I have such a good work-life balance um but yeah, but speaking yeah. of thousands of hours, I'm sure that's how long that we could chat with one another. I know, I know. <laughs> I wonder if anyone will make it all the way to the end. Um, I'm sure, yeah. but that's There's fine. some good topics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. House cleaning video to watch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, love <laughs> I have those. I have those channels, house cleaning videos channels. Um, but tell us a little bit about where we can find you. Oh, um, you can find me on um, 
Instagram and Facebook at Astrology of Health. Um, that is also my website, astrologyofhealth.com. All one word. I'm, yeah, all one word with no hyphens. This or is why I was... or, those are all the imitators. <laughs> That's exactly I... why I said that. <laughs> yeah. Astrology of Health with no little extras. That's where you can find me. So my website has heaps of stuff. I mean, it does. you know, I can right put now. a link to this. I can put a link to this, you know, for all the uh, podcasts I've been on. I've a gazillion little classes or bigger classes you can take. Um, yeah. I do a little new sign up for a little newsletter. You get a little handout, astral, you know, medical astrology handout. Um, yeah. That's where I'm at. That's, That's where I hang at. out. Astrology of health where yeah. it's all one word, no funny little symbols. And the O's in astrology and health are actual letter O's and not zeros. Oh, no one's done that to me. Oh, yet. oh, oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't take that as an idea, y'all. <laughs> yeah, my latest one is astrology of full stop health. That's my latest <laughs> imitator. If you want to go and block them and report them. <laughs> Please and thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. They Kira. do give you a break now and then. Sometimes I have like a month where they don't do it and then they come fast and furious. Oh, anyway. that's good. Thank At least they give you a small me. break. Yeah. Yeah. It's so I'm great so glad, to see you. So glad you're yeah. here to, to spin yeah. this with me and, uh, you know, to share your experience because it is, I think you're at a really, I think you're a, it's, how do I phrase this? It's very rare, I think, to find people interested in medical astrology who also have like a medical background, like who have mm. a, like degrees or licensing and, uh, at the same time, yeah. like myself included, I'm not, uh, I yeah. wanted to be a physical therapist for a long time and use that, uh, yeah. for like my, my astrology stuff, like combine that, but, uh, school's expensive. <laughs> so it never it quite worked so out. Expensive. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so I, I throw myself in that group too. Like I'm not, I don't have that. And I, so I think you're at a really unique and interesting, uh, kind of intersection there. And there's like Aww. much more there that I'd, that I'd love to talk about. Um, it is, it is a fun intersection to be at. And I yeah. feel very lucky to have been able to study all of that but all right thank you Kira so much for being here with us today uh, <laughs> thank you uh, listeners for for tuning in I'm uh, sorry that we didn't have a Scorpio Eclipse Magical Elections video hopefully this is much more much more fun and informational than than that ever could be um, but yeah. hopefully uh, the next new moon will have more magical opportunities for us and the cats and I will be here to help you walk through that as well. But until then, Aww. thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kira. Thank you. We'll see you next time.